Uh, it's been a while, but he's back in our studio, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Caliendo. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, me. Uh, yeah, here's one of the things that I love to do is I, because I, I haven't been out that much. Yeah. Uh, as I get out around the country, just to start looking at people and seeing how they've evolved yes. in the last year and a half. We're, I'm medium fatness, Frank, right now. <laughs> like I was, I was, I used to be really heavy, and yeah. then I got down to a pretty good weight, and yeah. now I'm kind of. Right in the middle. You look good, though. Uh, yeah. Good enough. You look good I'm enough. I'm kind of at that good enough. <laughs> yeah. You look um, good where enough. Where people are like, you look better than I remember you on TV. Yeah. But people who had seen me in the meantime are like, wow, what happened? COVID got to you, huh? <laughs> so How have we uh, held up? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty well. Enough. I was going to go around the room. Yeah, please. Uh, well, I was originally going to start with Nick and a man bun, which I yeah. wasn't ready for. I'm sure you... <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pandemic hair, and then it's I just haven't cut it. I was thinking about it last night. When am I going to cut it? Because it's eventual. Uh, and I'm, I've gotten kind of oh, so tired. That's just, it's just pure laziness is what it At is. At this it's, point, yes. It's like me trying to evolve as a comedian. I'll just keep doing impressions. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to just keep on doing. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Okay, so you I, go got with it. I got that. Uh, Steve, I'm, well, I can't think. Skip A, skip yeah. me. No, I, I'm never talking to yeah, yeah. You never grade the women. That's a, that's a <laughs> bad idea. Yeah. I found out through marriage. Um, <laughs> um, no, you, you, look, you, you look the same. Actually, Steve, look, you look pretty much the same. Casey looks thinner, I yeah. think. Yes, uh, he's uh, lost a lot of weight. Face, yeah, uh, yeah, face yeah, the, yeah, I didn't yeah. even realize it was you at first. Yeah. Um, and then Preston, I, you still look good. Uh, well, you, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, Nick's the only freak. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, I, I was. I had tucked my scalp back into a bun, but it was Is that, very I, painful. I was trying to think yeah. of it. It, it, it was like that scene in Brazil where they stretch the face. You see, you found a way to get that joke. I was trying to figure out a way to do the same joke, and you just did it better. <laughs> just a and big then, ball of flesh on the back <laughs> of your head. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You remember that, right? Oh, it was yeah. like a Star Wars character yeah. almost yeah. there, too. You can do the bar. <laughs> it's good to see you, though, man. And just, just yeah. looking back at, you know... Uh, Again, these are the things, the little signs of normalcy, and you're out and about, and I've been, you know, doing a, the, the research on you and stuff like that. And, and uh, What research is there? What have you been doing? There's research. You look at your various social media and things oh, okay. that are going yes. on and things that we've never talked to you about, and it's... I realize how long it's been. Yeah, you know? it's it's been a, a little uh, a, a bit of time. I love your social media stuff, though. I love I love what you're doing, and I love I love you. You have the podcast, right? Which... Yeah, I've been doing less of that. I, yeah. I don't know how you guys do it every day. I, know, I mean, right? I try to do it once a week, and I, I we were doing that, and I'm like. I've run out of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you have like talent. Like, yeah, you have legitimate. That's true. Talent. It's yeah. true. Yeah. You guys, yeah, I mean, Casey, you really, have, really, you really nailed it with that one. Thank like, you so much. Can, hold on, everybody else, be quiet. Casey, yeah, yeah. talk. You're just so handsome too. See, yeah, that's yeah. what I did. Is I complimented your thinness, yeah. and now it's uh, like now let's it's just give it back fast. for hours. Yeah, it's a big circle jerk. Oh, no, wow. but like if you, if I had what you have, like I, you know, I'd be able to like post. You know, several times a day. Yeah, and and I mean, I t there's certain things. I've started doing these TikTok things where I tried to figure out. I, I was a, I was against getting on TikTok 100. I hear you. And yeah. everybody I talked to was completely against getting on. Then I did a show with David Spade and Sal Volcano, and we're all talking about, yeah, are you on it? Yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. You know, it's like, like it's like it's like um, it's like a horrible cancer and wonderful ice cream all at the same well, time. Well, yeah, if you go into a, if you go into an executive's office, yeah. in L.A. in Hollywood, they will say, "What's your social? What are your social media numbers?" Now. <sighs> The TikTok stuff is the easiest thing to grow on because yeah. you could just have one TikTok that goes to 30 million people. All of a sudden, you have a million followers mm. out of nowhere. Right, and right. You look at somebody has like 35 views, 40 views, 200 <laughs> views, 14.7 million views, and you're like, that was the one thing you did? Guy licking dog? <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it, so that's a, so I just took the easy route once again and just went, oh, I'm going to just start doing these TikTok things. One thing I found was that like, teaching people how to do impressions. Yes. Was a, you know, it's because people look to learn mm -hmm. on there, and it's more entertainment than actual teaching. Um, but as, you, you know, you know, doing some voices where right. you can find certain voices, first of all, as I tell people, there's like a bass voice, and that's the one they – and for some reason, I don't know what it is, but it's Jim Henson doing Kermit the Frog. Right. Is one – because I don't consider impressions – of cartoons, I, I should say it like this. I don't consider cartoons and Muppets to be so much impressions because they're characters. Okay, right. it's, it's voice acting. Doing, yeah, yeah, there's somebody voice doing, which is yeah. a different thing. Right, right. Yeah. But it's easier to emulate a cartoon character because it's somebody putting on something to create that. Well, right. Let me say that w growing up. And uh, there was a show on called The Copycats years mm -hmm. ago with Frank Gorshin and Rich Old Little. School, yeah. and, uh, Marilyn Michaels, I think, was the female. And she was uh, um, amazing. 
and I would use their impressions as keys to do my impression. Right. There's some that I've just generated on my own. As you get older, you start doing that. Your you your voice, that. though, happens to hit at a perfect, malleable level, I think, for I think some of the most uncanny impressions I've heard have come See, out of your mouth. It's interesting because I don't think I have a great voice for that. Yeah, I, I yeah. think I, I fight my way into a lot of them. Um, but it, it, like a cartoon character is, uh, you, you create something with you, what's up doc? You, right. know, you create something to get there. If it's just a person talking, it's harder to find something. Cause what do you have to unlock? What you said was you find, you would see somebody on the copycats You go, okay, they unlocked it. Yes. Now uh, the, the gates are open. I can go and do that. Unlocking is a, is a perfect um, and, way to refer to it. Unlocking yeah. is way easier to do with a cartoon character or something like that. Right. Because you watch what they do. If it's Heinz Doofenshmirtz, it's very. <laughs> Very interesting. You know that? <laughs> right. Except for the cartoon people, they'll be like, you sound nothing like them. And they'll be like, what do you mean? It sounds pretty close. And like, yeah, but in cartoons, you have to nail it exactly. Yeah. You know, because it is an exact voice. They talk the same way all the time. Where you can see the difficulty in nailing things is when you go from like Mel Blanc to the subsequent. Yes. Bugs Bunny. Or Scooby-Doo. That are or just, it's like that uncanny valley, they say, when they use CGI someone and you can tell it's not quite well, right. Even with like Homer Simpson, because it's been 30 years with Dan Castellaneta doing yeah. it, but the voice at the beginning is different than the voice now. It's more so, Walter Matthau. Yeah, and you, you watch the evolution of it or you hear the evolution of it and it throws you off when you go back well, to the well, beginning. Well, he and Bart kind of flip too. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Bart, oh, they, as they far as the comedic, the character, yeah. the way yeah. they were. Yeah. Homer yeah. became the main character over oh. Bart. Right, yeah. 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 And and Homer became the the bumbling type of guy, whereas right. that was a little bit more Bard at the beginning. You've yeah. done, you, but you've done uh, cartoon. Did you do Gravity Falls or, or? Uh, just little bits little of bit, things? Yeah, I've just yeah. done little things. Uh, I've never been great at at those cartoons because I I do try to stay more in the the, the realm of reality with right. people. It's not big over the top. So to backtrack there with the Kermit the Frog. That voice, for some reason, can get you unlocked to it into a bunch of different things. So, hi, Hong Kermit the Frog here, right? Right. right. Reporting from the planet Coosbane. So, if you bring it down just a little bit, it becomes John C. Riley. <laughs> like you put it back in your throat, and there's like there's a bubble back there, and I had no idea. Did you touch my drum set? Did you touch my drum set? So that's in there, right there. That's great. But then you add a and little. And that's bit very Barkley esque too, right? It could be if yeah. you bring it down just a little bit here. <laughs> Barkley. That brings down a little bit more to the chest, then you're not being a knucklehead. <laughs> that gets that. If you add some air, uh, some airiness, a little bit of airiness to it, it becomes Mark Ruffalo as Professor Hulk. I see this as an absolute win. Like, <laughs> wow, he's Tony. I didn't even know that was. I didn't even know that was possible. Tony. But then you bring it, and it can become Joe Rogan. It's like, wow, Jamie, pull that up, Jamie. Oh my God, wow, is that a wildebeest? Oh God, that's crazy. So wow. there are there all You're those right. voices. It's just a little bit of throw. George W. Bush yeah. becomes Tara Bradshaw in Chris Rock. It's, <laughs> it's so weird how they're when, just they're just little bits. Right, how do you work these out? The, these impressions because whatever you hear in your own ears is not necessarily what everybody else hears. So do you have to like say something, record it, listen to it? Yeah, back? and play it over and over mm. and over. So do, do you sit? Do you sit with? Because this is when I've done it, not to you know embryonic compared to your level. Uh, but you'll you'll watch a movie and just keep repeating what they're saying, or watch a broadcast. Yeah, you it, find something and just right. say the thing. Like so, let's go, Chris Hemsworth. Right. Yeah. So Chris Hemsworth would be uh, just say Loki, Loki, my brother, Loki, <laughs> my brother, Loki, my brother. And if you bring it down a little bit, it becomes I'm Maximus Dismus Meridius. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so it's interesting because uh, Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe's down here. Uh, yeah. And Chris Hemsworth's up here. Up here. You know, so that's where <laughs> that's up uncanny. Where that comes, right there. Yeah, well, that's it, great. It's interesting because you don't, uh, sometimes a person like yourself can present an impression, and I didn't even realize that that person was impressionable. Okay. So, like, I'll give you an example like Jay Farrow uh, when he did his Denzel Washington. I had never thought of Denzel Washington as being someone, an impression for people to take on. And then I heard it and I'm like, oh my God, now it's like, I yeah. really hear all the isms. The, the best in there. one I've ever heard Jay Farrow do was Jamie Foxx, because that's like oh, yeah. that's like one where you go, "Oh my God, that's fantastic!" Yeah, yeah. And, it, and Jay's a great guy and very, very funny. But he's one of those guys where he comes up with those new ones, and you go, "Holy crap! Where did that? That's just interesting." That because then, like, I, and that's the unlocking. So then somebody else right. will watch it and right. do it, and that's what you know. It used to be, you all everybody stayed. Anybody who did impressions stayed away from that stuff. 
or, now or, people just copy everything. And that's why I just started showing people how to do them. So <laughs> so I'd at least get some credit. Like I did a Michael Keaton the other day, and it's all in the – Michael Keaton's in the S's. S. Right. I guess that. Uh, it's just in the right. <laughs> Just a little uh, I guess that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know. The line that I would would I would try or or, or that, is it, you, you want to get nuts? Let's yeah. get nuts. You want to get nuts? Yeah. Come on! Yeah, yeah. Let's get nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're exactly right. You find that find the vowels and the s's. I mean, Loki. you're, you're Loki. so good yeah. to to grab that uh, again. To, to Preston's point, earlier impressionists, there were a lot of people like Jimmy Durante. Oh, well, that's right. an obvious because they were yeah. big or over John the top. Wayne, big over yes. the top with very characteristic voices. So you go in on an on a, on a nuance and work it. I right. mean. Honestly, Chris Hemsworth should be kind of a, st- but I immediately heard Chris Hemsworth in because that. he's kind of yeah. yeah he's you know he's Shakespearean as Thor right um, and then but he's Australian right so his actually Chris Hemsworth talking is different than Chris Hemsworth as Thor sure but most people know him as Thor or Robert Downey Jr. If you do Robert Downey Jr. You just sound like you're gonna burp halfway through every sentence <laughs> totally okay so totally. I just <laughs> drank one of these nine sodas that. You guys gave me. Let me just explain this for a second. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> what happened was, uh, Nick, I asked Nick for a diet soda, and he brought me a Diet Coke. And I didn't say anything about it because Nick's a great guy. <laughs> Behind the man bun, there's a lot going on. <laughs> but then Marissa saw me sitting in the Acme Lounge, which, by the way, $1.45 million dollars. <laughs> Better than Stark Industries could have done. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought me two Diet Dr. Peppers, and I said, hey, this person gets me. <laughs> but what I didn't want to do, what I didn't want to do is make Nick feel bad, so I kept the Diet Coke, <laughs> and he done a lot to get it because even when he brought it to me he was wheezing a little bit so <laughs> i knew he went through an effort so do me a favor just enjoy me <laughs> for as long as I can. Wait, even the don't... way even the, the, the way uh, which i wouldn't have picked up on with uh with robert downey jr is you said so which is a very kind of philly uh baltimore type of pronunciation okay of that, i didn't uh, even know where that came oh. so so because he will hang on to a word uh, right yeah. right yes. and uh, punctuate it hit the I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the T hard, just like I hit that D. <laughs> yeah, he does all the time. And, and like in the in that uh, that first scene in uh, in Iron Man, you know, where they're sitting in the Humvee and they're and they're rolling along, and he's talking about uh, this. I don't want to see this end up on MySpace. Uh, but that that's kind of that you you've nailed that pentameter, which is also part of it. Right. It's the cadence. Yeah. The, uh, right. But watch this. What happens if you raise a little bit? Here we go. I'm freaking Dr. Evil. Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Nice. So throw me a freaking bone here. Did I say throw me a freaking bone here? No. Yeah. <laughs> but I could have. Now, if you go Dr. Evil, and this isn't political, but if you make some airiness, quite frankly, <laughs> it becomes Donald Trump. Yeah. Very, very. <laughs> so it's it's interesting how they're all, It's the cadences aren't that far off. What has wow. eluded you? What has eluded you as far as, uh, because I think, again, and I, you, though you say you don't have a, a, a foundational type voice, I think you do because you're not, you're not too much any one way. But yeah. which one has so people been difficult? Uh, well, there's, uh, I mean, there's so many. I, I, if, if I don't do it, I can't. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you haven't heard, like, that's pretty easy. That's Just pretty. A, it. And I, the, that's the statement. If you haven't you heard can't me do, do it, it uh, is there know, one you're working on? Yeah, there, there, there are some that I'm working on constantly. Jack Black is yeah. one. Uh, that I can fig- I figured out the singing and you know Legend of the Kung Fu Panda, dude. <laughs> right. yeah, it, comes yeah, from, yeah. it comes from there. But what do you do with it? You, right. You have most of the Avengers. Uh, yeah. Chris Evans is he worthy? I mean, yeah. Does he have well, there's enough? a cadence with him. Five years ago, we lost all of us. We lost friends. We lost family. We lost a part of ourselves. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I could do this all day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I have I ever told you about meeting Chris Evans. Oh, you no. you got so uh, it's a picture I love on your Instagram. You got your daughter also to to meet. So these Chris Ace Evans. Comic Cons, yeah. uh, and we've talked about some of the Comic Cons. I feel like I've told you this before, but what's the difference? Um, we all forget. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we uh, I, I went and got to go, go backstage uh, for one with Chris Evans, and it was actually to meet Josh Brolin because Josh Brolin. Oof. Uh, used me as the inspiration for Thanos. No. Uh, <laughs> Inevitable. Uh, no, uh, he used it for uh, for the movie W. 
So uh, oh, okay. there we go. So yes. Brolin and Oliver yeah. Stone watch me. I have interviews with both of, both of them talking about me. Oh wow! Uh, as the, you know, the, the, one of the things they watched to get the George un- to wild. unlock George W. Bush. That's amazing. And you, so, you're, and you, to begin with, by the way, you're also a big pop culture comic book fan. Yeah, and, yeah, a, yeah. A lunatic yeah, like and, us. And I love, the MCU is right. Uh, like my daughter is so into it. Uh, it got me even more into it. But I, I love that stuff. So uh, I grew up with the Super Friends. Meanwhile, let the whole of justice. Uh-huh. <laughs> Batman and <Yeah. laughs> And the star found its way to change transitions. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Enoch Chuck. <laughs> that was uh, uh, Enoch Chuck. That's when he would grow. Yes. Yeah. And that was, uh, I can't even think Apache of his name. Chi. Apache Chi. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then there was Samurai. Because of the old Hayaku. Yeah. He's been... Um, uh, I liked so, Vulcan, the first black superhero. Yeah, on there. yeah, he was awesome. Bla- he was Black Vulcan. Yeah. He was yeah. Black yeah. Vulcan. Yeah, they'd always yeah. put black in front of the name, <laughs> right. so you had you know, this guy's so, black. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'd gotten, I'd gotten, to, uh, I called my agents because apparently Josh Brolin had the same agency. I said, "Can we meet Josh Brolin?" So yeah. in the meantime, we'd gone and taken a picture. I have this picture of Josh Brolin and my wife and me, and it's like my wife's not even in the picture, and he's like. <laughs> Why do I know you? Yeah. Kind of a thing. So we finally get in backstage, and uh, the agent said, you can go in, but unfortunately, Chris Evans is going to be there at the same time. I'm like, I'll deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and my, it's for my 13-year-old daughter yeah. at the time. It's in Seattle. It's on her birthday. Amazing. So um, so we get back there, and Roland's like, I knew it was you. He's like, I, he's like, I just couldn't figure out why you were in Seattle. How cool. And then Chris Evans goes, what are you guys talking about? And it's like he's like this guy did uh this guy's was an inspiration for a movie for me and then I did the Thanos joke and he's like wait a second who are you you know Evan's yeah. like who are you I'm like Frank Callahan he's like oh my god and he starts quoting he's like do Madden doing this do uh, do some Belichick because he's a huge Patriots fan and my daughter's like this is insane yeah Captain America <laughs> knows my dad wow. <laughs> so then we get done. We go out. Uh, we're done because we're ta- it, 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 people out there take tons of pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, everything's behind because Evans wants to keep talking and Brolin's just uh, talking to my daughter because she broke her elbow, uh, and that's how she got into the MCU. Was watching all these movies and Evans like, wow. so you started watching movies like these <laughs> movies because she was because you broke your elbow. That's insane. It's right. insane. He's like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we go out and then uh, Evans takes a little break like five minutes later but, but behind the pipe and drape stuff and he comes over. He's like, Frank, come here. And we're talking for a little bit more and my daughter, Julia, goes, this is incredible. I go, why? She goes, he didn't have to talk to you this time. <laughs> he wanted to talk. To you. Wow. So we went to another one and uh, and Hemsworth, who is uh, not, I don't believe, a f- maybe he's a football fan. I don't know. He didn't seem to know me very much though. Uh, it was pretty cool because he doesn't even talk. Chris Hemsworth just, uh, he kind of mumbles things and people understand him somehow. They're just out of handsomeness. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes. I, I've never seen women just faint out of, like, they just, <gasps> <laughs> but it, just out of deference to his looks. Yeah, and he would, yeah. he just would say, he'd be like, uh, yes, uh huh, okay, yeah, all right, uh, yeah, pretty good, all right. And people are like, yes, whatever you need, yeah, well, you want me to run down the street, go grab something for you and be right back? Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, yes, they're going to be, all right, uh, okay, uh, 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 uh. And Hemsworth. Hemsworth doesn't even Hemsworth doesn't walk, he floats. He yeah. walks with bent legs. So it's like a vampire movie where they just kind of float along. Mm-hmm. And it was but those those are the most rare. And and probably the nicest of anybody was Tom Hiddleston, who uh, does a bunch of impressions. He's he does. very oh, good. Incredible. Yeah. He's incre- very good. And yes, I'm I am uh, and then he just he, he's that's how he talks. So yeah. he's just normally he's like when he's not doing I am like your was God. But he's like, um, could you um, do uh, perhaps and uh, a little bit of me and I and I said um, yes I'm doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so he's hushed and very polite. Yes, and, very and, polite. Uh, that's but he's, great. But yeah, he and he kind of he, he kind of slumps into when he's speaking. But he wasn't he and when I met him he was Loki. But Loki hadn't broken to be as huge of a character. Well, with the series too. Now. Yeah. And, well, and, and, well, even uh, Endgame, uh, uh, Infinity War, and Endgame, yeah. and even a little bit Ragnarok. Um, but hmm. yeah, I mean those. The, those movies, but like Spider Man, you know, uh, No Way Home. Everybody's just going crazy for that. Has that yeah. hit? Has that hit here yet? We were we were t- we were talking about it um, earlier, and obviously with the multiverse stuff and, and so on. Did you still do a party? Uh, you were doing a podcast based solely on. Yeah, this but I, stuff. I, you know what? Like you said, you told me you're like, there's so many of those. It's yeah. hard to even do. I was like, yeah, I, we'll dabble into it every once in a sure, while. But sure, sure. Kind of gotten away because there's yeah. people who know so much more than me. I'm like a basic right fan of stuff. 
that it's hard when people know the 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 uh, the issue it came from. I got you. Just yeah. going to reset real quick. If you're just tuning in, Frank Caliendo is here. Uh, be at the Hard Rock uh, on Friday night in Atlantic City, and then uh, Wind Creek Event Center in Bethlehem on Saturday. I, I'm the same way. I love to talk about this stuff, but when you get around the really knowledgeable, oh, it's incredible. You feel like a neophyte. But what I love about this is you have the same relationship. My daughter, my my sons love the MCU as well, but my daughter, who's only 14, is just way into it. And it had seen the movies here and there. And earlier in the year, or maybe it was last year we started, I'm like, let's watch every single movie. Yeah. Every yeah. single one together. And it's been such a great journey. And now with the continuing thing, like we were watching Hawkeye last night. Right. It's just the best. Yeah, it's and, and Endgame was a culmination for us. My son started out loving the MCU. Mm-hmm. So he was really into those. But then he got to the age where he didn't want to be with dad so much. Uh. And my daughter just jumped into it. And the first one she really saw that she loved was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And she loves comedy. And she's very, very funny. She's very quippy. She does impressions as well. Yeah, yes. she started yeah. doing uh, this Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, get out. That, that just cra- I haven't had put her on social media doing it because she doesn't really do any social yeah. media. But she's like, wow, you you look like the 4th of July. Like she's, <laughs> she nails it. I'm like, how do you even know what? Oh, man. Do, like you, this... do you think she might end up as an entertainer? Uh, she, I, I wish I've she seen... would. I think she wants to get into PR and stuff okay. like that. But she's she's still a little shy. But she's really a good actress. Well, um, and she, she's got these accents. Like she'll just break into a British accent. And people are like, is your daughter British? <laughs> no, she's just messing with you. What I've seen is she's a very likable. She definitely yes. has a, a, your attributes, and and she seems very talented. And I saw one picture that caught my eye, which was, I think it was on either Twitter or Instagram. It's uh, at a Harry Styles concert. Oh yeah, and it looks like Dad pulled some strings. Yeah, Dad. Dad and Dad, what did you Dad. do? Well. I didn't think about it until the last second. Uh, I bought some tickets yeah. uh, on the secondary market, which is not really buying. Yeah. It, it's more going into debt. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were they they were expensive yeah. tickets, and I I I generally I won't buy tickets for most sporting events because I can get around a lot of people who can get them for me for free. Right. And I am just a pig. I'm just a whore that way. I don't I don't have any problems with that. Sure. If I've worked with the NFL as long as I have, I don't have a problem uh, trying to get free stuff, you know, from there. But I, I don't know rock and roll. It's not even rock and roll, but I don't know yeah. music. Um, but then I saw something, and I, wanted, I was like, is Harry, I wonder if Harry Styles is with CAA, the agency. Right. And uh, I, turn, I emailed my main agent, and he's like, yeah. I'm like... How good of tickets can I get? Yeah. He's like, well, they have some family and friends tickets that you might be able to pull off. Uh, I was like, uh, okay, what do I need to do for that? He's like, we'll send you a sheet that says Harry Styles family and friends. <laughs> like, well, this is already scrapbook material, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I want, I want, I want to explain this too because I even said this to people. But I actually was on the road working that day. My wife went with her, but people thought it was me, and I explained yeah. it a few times and said it wasn't me. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say I'm the one there with her. Because uh, she's, like, tearing up. In the oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I uh, that was sent to me immediately. Uh, yeah, and she, she just, <laughs> like, those eyes are just beautiful. And she was just crying. And so she got front row. Oh, yeah, well, there you row, go, row, dude. Right behind the pit. And she's 4'11". So uh, she wouldn't have been able to see in the pit. Yeah. So she got the very front row. And it ended up she was sitting next to uh, actual family and friends, uh, the choreographer's friends, I guess, or family. Wow. Um, so she she was actually a little bit, but Harry apparently looked at her once, <laughs> uh, and it was like re- reverse Medusa. <laughs> yes. uh, but she like she's like, Dad, you're not gonna believe this. Oh my God! And I was like, I'm, I, What? You're a, you suddenly are a Valley girl? Where did that come from? <laughs> I guess it's the wrong Valley. We do live in Phoenix, but that's uh, great. different Uh-oh. kind of Valley. But that's yeah, awesome. Cool. Yeah, to be able but to those do are that. the moments. Everything I yeah. do, for the most part. You know, when I, I, I you know, basically, I say it like this, I whore myself out in some of these things. It's for my kids. I don't, I don't try to meet famous people, super famous people. I don't try to meet athletes and stuff like that unless it's for my kids. Yeah. And like, oh, I'll, I'll do anything. And they're like, no, dad, don't do it. I'm like, you know what? You'll never forget this. Let me be yeah. the awkward yeah. dad. Yes. And half the time they seem to know me and they're pretty cool about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if you go up to somebody and they don't know you, I'm sure you, I don't want to say this because it might sound negative, but in radio, that you know, people don't always know your faces, but mm-hmm. as soon as they find out who you are, 
a little bit more. And it's a little different nowadays because you guys are everywhere and your face is everywhere. But when you're younger, I guess, when you're yeah. early on in your career, people go, oh, wait, 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 you're Preston and Steve. Oh, oh, come on. All of a sudden, it opens things up and people are like, oh, my gosh, you're part of my life. Yeah. And you don't realize how l- little things you do affect people so much. It's so amazing. That, uh, that, and you can you can be... Uh, something that helps somebody evolve, yeah. and it's really crazy, and and they they appreciate it, and they know it, and then uh, I just use that to my benefit, <laughs> yeah. and then you exploit it. You know, and I it, am Italian, you know, hey. mostly for your kids, well, I mean, yeah, a little, little bit. bit. Well, it's it's for my kids, but it's make me to make me look pretty cool. In yeah, my kids, I, there's a big part of it that's being a cool I, dad. Again. No one's going to argue uh, against no, that. No, yes, everyone would want that. I was looking at your Instagram <laughs> account. A picture of your dog sitting on your wife's lap. Your dog is gigantic. Uh, uh, so let me preface this. <laughs> okay. So we have four Shih Tzus, Okay. Uh, first of all. Very small dog. Uh, yeah. They're, they range from two pounds to... Oh, there's the picture. <laughs> yeah. uh, his name is Rocco, by the way. Uh, the, he's a St. Bernadoodle. Uh, St. Bernadoodle. Yeah, so, okay. So the four Shih Tzus are Carmela, Luciano... Um, I can't even remember all of them. <laughs> Carmela, Luciana, uh, Nico, and Romeo. Okay. They're, they're all Italian. All Italian and then, names, and yeah. then Rocco. Okay. okay. So Rocco um, is half St. Bernard, half Poodle, and you can imagine that creation. Oh, my God. Um, so, oh, and the dad, is the, po- the dad is the Poodle. Okay, so here's the thing. He oh, is, okay. He is giant. He's seven months old there. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. So what's the expected wow. size increase? Well. That has been one of the issues I've had with my wife. So my wife isn't exactly what you call a truth teller. Um, or from what I could tell. So we started out, uh, she wanted to get a big dog to guard the house. Right? Yeah. Um, that dog is the house. Yeah, he's yeah he's about the house, but he's also the cowardly lion. Oh, you boy. Know, oh, yeah. oh, put him he just runs away. <laughs> um, so he's, oh he's seven months old. He was supposed to be... According to the breeder, about 105 pounds. At seven months old, he's 111. Oh, man. They grow to be, they grow for until about two years old. Oh, no. So we've been told by the vet, which he, my wife has taken to the vet multiple times, and he, she said, how, how big is he going to be? And she's like, well, the, the, the vet was like, he's, uh, he's tracking pretty big. And she's like, how big? <laughs> And I was like, and then I was like, how big? <laughs> and then she would be, the vet said, well, you got to come back a couple times. And then so the chart, the chart, chart and, and I said, well, how big, hon? She said, 165. Oh, my 165. God. Yeah. So um, he's. He's huge. We, I love he's him. A, he's, yeah, he's awesome. Listen, I had a great Dane growing up, and it was a, she was a champion. You know, my family is the first dog I, I can remember as a kid. Uh, on her hind legs, she was six three. I mean, she six was three. six three. She was a huge champion, Great Dane. And uh, when she would run in the backyard, you, in the house, you would hear what sounded like horses. You know, and I mean, yes. <laughs> and and, uh, and so uh, it was that kind of thing. But they are awesome. You know, when I, it, I find big dogs to be so sweet. Well, he's cuddly, and he's around the little dogs all yeah. the time. So they climb up on the couch. He was never supposed to get on the uh-huh. couch. <laughs> <laughs> now he looks l- like a blanket and a pillow on the couch. The best, my, yeah. my wife would not say the best part, but I'm going to say the best part is when he sits on one of the little dogs. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sometimes great. you can't find Carmella. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you look under Rocco. <laughs> oh, there she is. And do the little dogs like Rocco? Uh, yeah, Romeo looks like a miniature version. Romeo is a is a Shih Tzu, and he's got some similar colorization. Okay, um, if that's the right word. Uh, but uh, it's so funny when Rocco came home, he was only twice the size of the Shih Tzus. They were like six, seven, eight pounds. Right. There. But Rocco would lay down, and he looks like a bear skin rug. You know, he just he would. And now, then Romeo started emulating everything, mimicking everything Aww. he did. No, oh, there's the Shih Tzus right there. They look like Ewoks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, See, I have um, a Bernadoodle, and he's about eighty pounds, and I I love him, and and he just loves people. And so when I see that dog, I'm like, I'm I'm like a little bit jealous because the only thing I would like uh, Reggie to be is a, just a little bit bigger. I would love it if yeah, he was 100 pounds. Yeah, you think you think at first, and then you realize. Uh, see, here's the thing: 100 was probably pretty good. He's great. I, I don't. I don't want to say anything negative about him because you 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 come to love them. It's like your children. Sure. Uh, Can I you, guess something you, negative? Make you, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
knowing from growing up, like I had to go out every day with a shovel uh, because there were yeah. there were uh, I guess John Madden sized bowel movements in the in the. Uh, yeah, there it, you go, boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean that dog, that Great Dane crapped like nobody's business. Yeah, and I have three other humans in my house <laughs> who refuse that they believe they're above that. Oh uh, yeah. So I'm the crack crack crack. I'm the- <laughs> I must be on crack. I'm the crap picker upper, <laughs> and it's a it's an occupation unto itself. Yeah, there's quite a bit because the little dogs they just spit out marbles. Yeah, you know it's just it, it's yeah. not hard. You can just kick it. You know it dries up pretty quick. It kick into the grass, and yeah. the, the grass grows a little better in one spot. Right, right. These things, these are legitimate landmines, <laughs> and uh, you know you can't. The smell is just horrific. Yeah. But I'm the only one who really does it, and uh, like everybody else thinks they're taking care of the dogs. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is the element right. of taking care of the dog that stinks. You know, yeah. all the hugs and all that. And it's funny because he's he's getting trained and he's doing a pretty good job, but he comes up and he just gives you a full-on hug. But if, if you look at him, I say this to people because I think he looks like a man in a gorilla costume <laughs> wearing a dog suit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks yeah, like that's... there's three faces. When you look into his eyes, you're like, there's a human under two masks. <laughs> He doesn't even know that he's, you know, he thinks he's a, he thinks he's a person. That's right? accurate, yeah. Uh, speaking of Madden, uh, and, uh, you know, I hate to go to this topic because I know you've, you've done it a million times, but there, there's a documentary coming out about right. him. That, and, no, that which I've, actually makes it relevant, which makes me want to talk about yeah, it. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And because uh, he really is a fascinating individual for what he's done for the sport and for the video games and everything that's going along with it. So, uh, A, are you part of the documentary? And um, B, uh, have you ever had a chance to spend any time with him? Okay, A, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, it may have been a thing where they didn't want me as part of it. Mm. Uh, Madden didn't like me for many, many years. You said he had issues. Yeah, he I, just, I mean, nobody had ever done that kind yeah, of stuff. Right. I mean, there was a little bit of Billy Crystal doing Howard Cosell and yeah. that kind of stuff back in the day. But it's a weird thing with sports people where they get put on pedestals. So they're just so used to being loved and put up on that pedestal and, and if you're inside the group, if you're a former player or a player, it's okay to make fun of people and mess around with people. But if you're not, you're an outsider, and you're a five foot six comedian, yeah. making fun of the six foot two, <laughs> you know, yeah. bigger than life entity, it's kind of weird. And it didn't help that the first times I ever did the man impression on TV, it was Jimmy Kimmel brought me on and took a pair of hedge clippers to the eyebrows I was wearing. <laughs> right, and there was a, that's a, a, actually a funny story when Jimmy Kimmel first did it. He and his producer, Jim Brusca, were fighting over the guy to do the John Madden impression in the in in the first segment. I was both the guys. They're like, no, I got this guy. No, I got this guy. Oh, that's hilarious. And I turned out to be like, who's your guy? It's this Frank Calamari guy. (laughs) Like, yeah. Well, I was both Frank Calamari. So, um so the Madden, Madden, like the legend has it that Madden's sitting in a, you know, in a in a trailer. He's like, what, what, what is this? And they they try try to get him not to watch the segments. <laughs> um, so it finally, it, it turned out he didn't like me for years, and it finally, because I, I I like these people I do impressions of. I always think an impression is something you find that you like about the person, even if you don't like the person. Right. You find the thing that you find interesting about them. That you make fun of it. Like, so it, I talk about this with politicians, too. Yeah. Politicians are going to give you uh, 40, 60, 50, 50, one way or the other. And, you know, but I find the thing about them, and I don't make it about politics. You make it about them. So I them. take it, like, with a Trump, yeah. I just find about, I go over, I make him over, you know, he's already P.T. Barnum yeah, in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah. I go the next beat, we're going to make the universe great again, and then we're going to make the multiverse great again. <laughs> you know, that's, it's go with silly as right, opposed right. to trying to make a, you know, a big point with that. Right. Uh, politically, so uh, I lost. With Madden, so, so Madden, it was just being goofy and big and over the top. I finally met it was a Four Seasons Hotel in Dallas. Um, not important story. I just want you to know the yeah. place. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's sweet, right? In the Four yeah, Seasons, yeah. 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 The Four Seasons Dallas. Yeah. It's a Super Bowl. He's just standing there talking to these kids. There you are in the presidential suite. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even bro, how come I didn't get the room I wanted? Guys? <laughs> Is Caddy Adondo in there? <laughs> Sorry, Calamari. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, Jerry Jones like I can't get my room. I can't get it because Caliendo's here. <laughs> Is that how you say it? I didn't even. No, I mean, I, 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 
just bothering the crap out of him. <laughs> um, so uh, he's standing there. Jimmy Johnson, football coach, not the race car driver, standing next to him. I'm like, Jimmy, can you believe I'm this close to John Madden? He's like, what? You haven't met him? He taps Madden on the shoulder. Madden's like, what is it, Jimmy? Oh. <laughs> Mm. And the look on his face is like oh, when no. Shaggy and Scooby see the bad guy pop out of the barrel. Like, so right. it's like, hey, Scoob, like, rut row. Uh, <laughs> who's going to clean this up? <laughs> it's probably going to be Steve. No. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I made his grandkids laugh, and then he, he got into it. He kind of liked it. Because when people don't see you, when they don't know you, they think you're doing it. I mean, uh, I, listen, if you watch, it, it, and this is why I like to find the thing. Like, Tony Danza was one of the first people. Like, Tony Danza, I said, you look Samita, Mona. <laughs> and then when somebody from the old neighborhood, from Ita- from like like yeah. the old Italian neighborhood, Mrs. Rosie, <laughs> like it suddenly becomes super Italian out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love that. It was yeah. silly, but it was yeah. like, hey, that's the style. So you find those things and you grasp, you know, you grasp onto them. So, so would you, you wouldn't say you're buddies now, but he's he's no, now. I, I don't think I've seen him since then. <laughs> okay, I mean, it was, uh, but his, it, there was one point that his grandkids. Or his his kids were trying to get me to do his birthday party, and then that didn't happen. Mm. Like there were things that he just didn't like about, you know. Well, besides besides uh, th- that, and I, I want to ask about this story because I saw it written in some uh, an article about you. I forget where exactly I saw it. Probably GQ, GQ, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or QG. Some of them. Did Not Lou God. Ferrigno walk out of a show? Oh yeah, of yeah, yours? yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou Ferrigno came to see me in Vegas, and so, I never call people out when they're there, but right. I thought it was cool that the Hulk was there. Right. Uh, seventies TV. Uh, uh, Lou Ferrigno because we were just home. we were just talking about we've had Ferrigno win he was he was, he was good but there is a story about him that he's or just in general that he can be yeah. mercurial well I don't know because they said he was just tired but okay. he's also almost deaf or close to deaf right yes. going to see an impressionist <laughs> right guy who does most the impressions and I, he knew who I was I guess but I said Lou Ferrigno's here and the publicist is like no the publicist was still there oh. I guess but he wasn't there and I'm like he left I didn't even hear the music with him turning back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know, so I. That's a great I, line. But it was just so. Cr- yeah, there it is. <laughs> just walking there, turning slowly, slight <laughs> slow motion uh, by a creek. Yeah. Um, it was always Bill, Big- <laughs> Bill Bixby in a ripped up shirt. Uh, and, like, you know, and maybe you know the answer to this. Yeah. Why was he David Banner on that show? Believe it or not, Don't they know. thought, and this is what I've heard a number of times, they thought Bruce was kind of of uh, uh, effeminate. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. And that was it. Yeah, that's what I heard. If anyone knows a, a more or a, can, can prove another story, that I'd like to hear That sounds like it. 70s yeah. thinking. Yeah. 70s yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's David Banner. Yeah. Yeah, but... Dr. Uh, David Banner. Right. Physician. <laughs> yeah, which was the same voice as uh, Solomon Grundy, I think, on the Super Friends. Oh, wow. The, yeah. The, the, the uh, guy who uh, did Lurt, the narration? Was, uh, yeah, yeah, he was, he was Lurch. <laughs> Lurch in the Adams family. Ted Cassidy? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure that was Wow. Like, wow. I think so. Check it. I, I, get, I get a lot of stuff wrong. I also thought <laughs> my dog was going to be 105 pounds. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you, and I made, and I, I, I remember making this note watching over the, uh, the, uh, the, the break, the Thanksgiving break. You know, now, now the, the Godfather movies are part of the Thanksgiving tradition now on, on A&E. And when I watch, you know, young, young Al Pacino, Preston's favorite actor of all time, Al Pacino, with that with his very clean and and very whispery, very... It's that high, that, right, that thing way up here. Right, and what occurred to get him to this gravelly, gravelly Pacino that we have well, now? I think it was Son of a Woman, right? That's where he yes. changed to a southern, a southern gentleman. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where it came from, <laughs> but then I start to draw the words out. <laughs> Make it happen. But where that? Kevin where is Pollock that? calls him Foghorn Lego. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah, he, he just goes. I say, son. I say, that's a chicken hawk, son. <laughs> Which is a different version than my Pacino came from. This one, right? <laughs> Chew the gum. Yes. <laughs> Start looking around. <laughs> Try to understand where you're coming from. My Pacino. My Pacino is all about curiosity. In acting, it, they teach you to be a, a very curious. curious. Yeah. Um, because when you know the lines, you have to reenact not knowing what's coming. So you have to be curious, and and that's what drives it through. Pacino does that to the next level, where you could uh, turn a light on him. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> Hold the phones here. You mean you flip a switch over there, and a light goes on over there? 
This is sorcery! <laughs> <laughs> but him, like Godfather 2, and we'll, we'll joke about the line Steve, where... It, Steve does, yeah. a, he does this uh, the version, his version of, of Michael Corleone from Godfather 2 that just cracks me up, yeah, and it's just his... When my children play with their toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and... Right, and, right. and, and <laughs> Yeah, you know, right before he's right. about to explode. Where are my but, children? Yeah, <laughs> and he's he's like that, and he said, you know, it's a true true story. When he's yeah. explaining the Luca Brasi thing, you know, right. and, and it's so different. Yeah, you would not ever connect those two voices. Very little middle ground. Was he gargling with turpentine at some right. point? Mm-hmm. I like to chew glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to do. Yeah. Full of whiskey. <laughs> Gets you in a couple different ways. As it goes down, you start to feel it in your sternum, your esophagus. <laughs> And you feel, and now you talk. <laughs> I'm not sure the words I can say, <laughs> but you're talking from your balls. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah that's where yeah, I was, the yeah. nether region. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I am Mephisto. Tied it back into the superhero. Uh, uh, you were right about Ted Cassidy. Uh, yes, there you go. yes, he was the narrator on The Incredible Hulk. Ted yeah. Cassidy was also the original. I think I'm right on this. I'm, I'm right with you on, on. I believe I'm right. When Bigfoot first appeared on The Six Million Dollar Man, that was Ted Cassidy, and then it was Andre the Giant. Hmm. I believe that's how it was. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, Yeah. here we go. Six Million Dollar Man, uh, Bigfoot, and he was in two episodes. He was also in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Do you remember the scene where Paul Newman... It gets into, uh, starts a knife fight with one of his, the members of the Hole in the Wall gang, and he kicks him in the nuts. That's no. Ted Cassidy. No. Really? Hang on yep. a second. I think I saw. We're we're going through his entire career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh no! I thought it said the Great Escape. It was the Great Lester Boggs. So. <laughs> Not, as yeah. Not as great. Not as great. Bad great Lester Boggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah, it's amazing mm-hmm. when you see the things that people used to do or yeah. Yeah, were involved in. They're, they're smaller. You know, like Ted Knight's in Psycho, right? You, yes. Yeah. Really? He's, he's one of the cops. Yeah. He opens up the he opens up the door y- as. Uh, Anthony Dorman? Perkins is sitting in there, and he's. Yeah. I see that fly. I'm not even going to oh, kill that. Wow. Fly. Yeah. yeah. You're wow. just because you, you expect that night. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> here he comes. Ooh, Billy, Billy, Billy. <laughs> yeah, those those types of things. Our boss some uh, some uh, Bill sometimes has affectations that are like Ted Knight, and yeah. so you when, heard him when he came in here. Yeah. All of a sudden, oh, what are we doing here? Steve, what are we doing? Yeah, he's, <laughs> oh, look at what's going on here. We have a guest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's easy to grin when the guest comes in. (laughs) Parting your way, wearing a mask all day. You have a smile like a crocodile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The crocodile didn't fit, but who cares? Play crocodile rock, work it in. You know, he I think he won like like five silver stars in in in, nice. Yeah. Check his military right. career. Well, also, what? when you're doing that, yeah. also bring it back. He was the original voice of the Super Friends. He was the, meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice, <laughs> Wendy and Marvin <laughs> and the Wonder Dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> Those were so bad and so wonderful at the same time. Wow, yeah, check, check, check. Steve, check. you nailed it. He was in the 296th Combat Engineer Battalion in World War II, and he earned five battle stars. While Battle serving uh, okay. in the wow. European theater. A lot yeah, of people would have stopped at four. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to five. Five battle stars. I should have been in Get Battlestar Galactica. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look out for the Cylons. Mm-hmm. That guy's going to someday play face in the A-team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want another piece of insignificant <laughs> trivia? James Doohan, who played Scotty, lost a finger during the Normandy invasion. Really? Yes. He was a, 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 a Canadian soldier. Oh. Nick, have you checked that yep. one as well? I'm on it. Uh, and I, it, all these, all these crazy stories, missing fingers, and uh, and uh, military awards. <sighs> wow, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Did but, you, uh, was I it John, Ted who, John Denver was a sniper. <laughs> No, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers was a sniper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had yeah. several kills. John Denver was a uh, yes. helicopter pilot. I like and Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Hello, sniper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask you. Bob Ross gutted a man with a, <laughs> yeah. with a paper clip. That's what? it. Yeah, he yeah. was like John Wick. He killed three men with a pencil. Mm-hmm. James Doohan got shot in the chest. What? And there, there was, it was stopped by a silver cigarette case uh, given to him by his brother. See? Well, Which is a, a, a reason to go back to smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. There Good were point. actually legitimate reasons. That's wow. why I wanted to ask you as well, while we have you here, because um, uh, you talk about being surrounded by talented people. And I know, uh, um, you know, when you were on Mad TV, you had, and I was going through the people who were with you on that, you had Alex Borstein, who's yeah. 
Mo Collins, Michael McDonald, not the Michael McDonald that you think, the uh, another guy you've seen in all the places, great. Ari Spears is, uh, you know, friend Fantastic. of the show as well, and and we, you know, yeah, and, and he's Aries. a big comic book nerd as I didn't well. Even know that yeah. tremendous. I always like, used to do Aries for Aries. I go, yo, this is Aries Spears. How you doing, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, like, how, and he changed his phone number every week. Do it? Oh yeah. And Will Sasso. Oh, uh, Will's fantastic. Another, another, another. Yeah, Keegan Michael Key and yes. uh, and, uh, and and Jordan Peele too. I mean, it's crazy the amount of people. There was a weird thing for a while where Mad TV. It was always crap on. Stuff, yeah, and and they didn't. They thought of you as sketch actors. Okay. And you were labeled only sketch actor, and you could. Couldn't do other stuff, really. And uh, yeah, Nicole Sullivan. There's a lot of amazing people that, that Bobby Lee in there. Too. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Yeah. I um, mean, and it, but there there seemed to be this this um, SNL or nothing. Uh, there was a horrible show called Fridays, yeah, you know, right. for a while uh, that they tried Michael to make. Richards was on Michael there. Richards. Michael Richards. Yeah. Larry David. Right. Larry David. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but when when uh, Mad TV was on, they they it, I well, remember. Well, here's the thing that happened with Mad TV. Mad TV was never promoted because primetime was always in such trouble for Fox. Okay. And then Mad TV was not owned by the network. Saturday Night Live one was live, and they could uh, they can always do something up to the moment. Right. Um, and two, it's owned by Broadway Video and the network. Right. It's the network's thing. I got. So they're yeah. making direct money on it, whereas opposed to. Uh, Mad TV being syndicated, almost like syndicated, right? Well, not exactly syndicated, but a very similar to that, where th- that they had full on ownership. I never of thought it. of that. Yeah. yeah. So it would be, you know, it would be hard to if if your main things at the time. This is before Fox was only really getting cartoons to work at mm-hmm. the yeah. time. Yeah. And uh, so it, it, it they were always struggling in that in that area. So why would you promote late night that you don't own? When it's not as lucrative of a time. It's no, just a right. business thing. It wasn't really a dislike of the show. I think they liked the show and they liked that it, they could keep the the time zone there because they didn't want to get rid of it and release it back to the uh, affiliates. The, the local affiliates, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, it was like, well, we don't get much out of this and that's the way they look at things. And huh. that's just how business works. But there's a solid collection of stuff. I know you're people. proud of a lot of the work from that time. I mean, not was... really. <laughs> no, I'm not proud of a lot of other people's stuff. I, I was one of those people that, like, I tried to do different stuff and they'd always say, how about another John Madden sketch? I'm uh. like, really? Another one? Didn't we just do him building a birdhouse? Yeah, but now he's trapped in the birdhouse. <laughs> yeah. like, but that's the same kind it's the of same. thing. Let's do something different. So um, you had Frank TV, which was a bit of a... Right, that uh, was fun. Uh, it was hard because it was... You know, that was that's a funny thing. Melissa Villasenor, I, I got her on TV, and she was the first... Per, that was the first time, time she'd ever been on TV, and then... Years later, she was on America's Got Talent, and that was ne- that's now listed as the first show she's oh, ever really? done. Oh, really? Oh, man. But that's, again, network. They, yeah. That, now they have that thing. But we had we had some great guests on there, some people. Um, and now if I knew some of the people I know now, I would have done I was always trying to get more people on that show. I was like, we need more people right, to make right. this more fun. Because you were uh, in every Everything. stinking thing. I was shooting, thing. like, way too much. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. It was just... And no budget for it, and and grand ideas, and really great writers. But then it was funny because by the time it was edited down, you go, oh, they took the timing out of all this stuff. Yeah. Mm. So I go back and I go, ah, man, I would if I could have had my hands on this more at the time. It was also a prime time sketch show, which doesn't work. It's got you know you got to be a late night kind of thing, so you can right. be a little goofier and edgier. Um, and do a stuff, and you go off on tangents. You, you know, when you're a prime time sketch show, you got to hit the masses a little bit more. Did you see the documentary about the Dana Carvey uh, show? Uh, I haven't. With R- oh, Robert so Smigel, it, it is. It is. It speaks to exactly what you're talking about. R- where every the show like, like that couldn't fail. It had so much talent behind it, yeah. and it actually was a great show. But for all sort of reasons that you're mentioning. The luck of the draw, that you know, the, how the winds are blowing, and it ended up and it's, it's going hard. away. And now it's hard, I think, because you, I mean, the the great thing about the internet and doing this stuff like I do on the TikTok or even yeah. Instagram and stuff like that is you put stuff out there and the audience kind of finds you. Mm-hmm. When you have to play stuff to TV, you have to play broader. That's the way you know comedy clubs and theaters work too. It used to be that you go out there and play to a broad audience, and that's how you brought people in. Now. The more specific you can be, the more people you can find that love what you're doing. That's a good point. And then it grows, and it's shared by people who love the same kinds of things. Like, right. I could do a Mike Ermintrout from Better Call Saul. Okay, all right, everything's going to be fine. Right. But, they, you know, people who love that show are like, oh, that's great. But everybody else is like, who is that? <laughs> right. You know, that's the that's the kind of thing. And that's, that's why presidents... Uh, people are like, why do you do like the president stuff at the beginning? Uh, 
because I know you for sports. I go because yeah. everybody knows. It's, right. it's not about the politics of it. Right, right. But I try to balance the stuff out. If I, I, I've started working on the Biden, too. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, Trump would get everybody on board by, well, this was, this yeah. was Obama. Well, let me be clear. He'd say yeah. that, and then <laughs> right, he'd do yeah. kind of like a Jedi mind trick. Uh, Trump would do, and everybody knows it. That's how <laughs> he would get, like, get people on board. And then Joe Biden, which his voice is only about 75, 60% of the way there, he does the whisper follow-up. It's a this, right. this or that kind of thing. I'd be talking about, like, uh, vaccines or the, you know, he'd be like, it's not politics, it's science. Yeah. It's, it's, science. Yeah, it's the whisper. It's the this or that. Yeah. It's not. Pay them more money. Yeah. Wait, who's he right. talking to? Right. Like, that's like, it's like, but but he, he, does, he does the, come, come on, man. Yeah, come on, And man. then he does, not a joke. Not a, joke. And, Not a joke. And you know the deal. You know the deal. I yeah. And I don't have to tell you. No, tell me. Please. Yeah. It's got a little Pacino, but he does that that whisper follow up where he's like, "It's not politics. It's science. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. It's the humidity. It's not delivery. It's the genre. Yeah. <laughs> the guy, the thing. I don't have to tell you. No, tell me, please. Yeah. please tell us. Tell me. Uh, but again, it's just the silliness and stuff. But everybody knows those voices. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard. You go into. Uh, you know, here's another thing. This is one you guys will get, but uh, back in the superhero thing, Chris Hemsworth is going to play Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. yeah. in that biopic. Yeah. And all the first thing you start thinking, let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, right. the train. Wait a second. No, that's not it. You know, how yeah. does he audition? Let me tell you something, brother. Brother. No? Loki? No, Loki's Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> brother, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but that audition process, he probably didn't have to audition, but he's like, let me tell you something, brother. On a train. Say my prayers. Eat my fight. Yeah, Hulkamaniacs, man. <laughs> Got it. It's like, where's my, where's my old now? Where's he? That, that's sweet. Look at that. Oh, handsome. Oh wow, we're looking at uh, side by side pictures of uh, of Hulk and uh, Hemsworth as him. That's yeah. a pretty good. That's like yeah. if Hulk Hogan were on the cover of GQ. Yeah, that's a... we we had Chris Hemsworth on when the first Avengers um, movie was coming. I think, um, and he was talking about we, we were talking about how how Jack did got in Preston. And he goes, "Have you seen Chris Hemsworth?" No, it's Chris Evans. Yeah, yeah. yeah or Chris, did you say that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I was like, I, I asked him something like, "I mean, you know, you, you got to feel like a badass, uh, you know, yeah. being, uh, you know, wearing that outfit and, and as jacked as you are." He's like, "Have you seen Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> Have you yeah. actually seen him?" <laughs> right. Yeah, he's just yeah. a monster. I mean, it's amazing how. How in shape a lot of oh these, my God. The, the superhero people. If you can get oh. paid to do that, to yes. do that transformation, you know, and, and then as they talk, as every one of them will say the same thing, uh, you know, we're friends with Rob McElhinney who did the, the, the transformation, you know, for It's Always Sunny. And he he got down, you know, super cut up, but you're you're eating like four almonds a day. Yeah, and, the and, Russell I, Wilson diet. Right, it's like yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I just write. I just want to get the regular person. <laughs> but you're, you know what? You're good enough. You're yeah. good enough. Yeah, that's good where enough. you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the shape yeah. you're in. That sounds like a segue to a break. It <laughs> is. We actually got a wrap, uh, Frank. So uh, listen, you're going to be at the Hard Rock and Casino in AC on Friday, and then the Wind Creek Event Center in Bethlehem on Saturday. Tickets are available at frankcaliendo.com. These are two big uh, chances you haven't seen. Yeah. Haven't been around for for a bit, and it's. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're looking for something to do, this is a no brainer. So mm-hmm. perfect. Uh, but if that, there's one thing you can say about me: I'm a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my new slogan. No Frank brainer. Calendo, he's a no brainer. Yeah. yeah, you're good enough. <laughs> good enough. He's a good enough no brainer. Uh, it is so awesome to see you in no, person. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you for me. for taking the trip uh, to to be here this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely, we Thank appreciate it. And uh, I know people are gonna want to see you live as well. So yes. I'm sure you'll pack them in. But thanks for being here, man. Yeah. Frank Caliendo, guys. Yeah. Hey! Hey!